Now the first step for floating a mortar bed floor is to position the float strips. And the strips I'm using here will provide a one inch minimum thickness on the floor. But because the subfloor is not level, I need to shim up the float strips. And to do that, I'll use mortar. Here I'm building up a ramp of mud that more or less corresponds to the slope of the subfloor. I'll spread it out loosely and then pack it down. Once that's done, I'll use the level to make sure that the mortar is level. I seat the level on the ramp and then fine tune it with a hammer. And once that's done, I can take the float strip, position it on the ramp, and using the level and the hammer once again, tap it into its position. By the way, this float strip has been thoroughly soaked in water. If you place a dry float strip on the wet mortar bed, it'll warp out of position. Now you notice up here I have a couple of straight edges that are acting as a dam to keep the mud out of that area. And this is where the expansion joint will go. Now that I have this leveled along the length of the floor, I want to get this covered so it doesn't warp. But before I can do any more, I want to level across the room. And to do that, I take my straight edge here and level. All right, now I'm a little high here. It's about a sixteenth of an inch off. Now, to straighten that up, all I need to do is pull the float strip up from where I tamped it down, and then I'll just sprinkle a little bit of mortar over the path, and I'll put the float strip right back on top. Take my level. This should be real close if I sprinkle the mud out uniformly. I'll just recheck again. There, that's right on the money. Once the two strips have been leveled, I can begin to fill in the area. Now for deck mud to achieve its maximum compressive strength, it has to be compacted. You can't simply just pour it out into the floor. Here I'm distributing the mud evenly over the whole floor area between the strips. And then I'm using the trowel to actually ram the mortar into position. Once that's done, I can begin the screening process by bridging the two float strips with a straight edge. Here I'm just digging down through the mud so I can hit the tops of the float strips. From there it's a gradual process of just sawing off the excess. I concentrate on the larger central area in the middle of the floor and then once that's finished I can fill in the margins of the floor. Once again, piling up the mud and then ramming it into place. Where the screed doesn't reach, I can remove the excess with a trowel. The excess from the first screeded portion is pulled back and distributed, packed down, and finally screeded off again. Techniques will vary, but I get better results using a slicing motion rather than a scraping motion. All right, now at this point I have to stop. 
because I'll need to bring my float strips forward. And to do that, I just pull the mud away from each one of them. And if you've packed the mud down pretty tight, it should be a pretty snug fit. Now I bring this one all the way back. Now it's important to keep a, at least a short section of the float strip within the area that you've just greeted off. And I want to clean off the top of this. Okay, it looks like I have to come up about a quarter of an inch towards the rear. Now you have to be careful so you don't get any cement particles down here in the in the trough that'll throw your level reading off. And then real gently put that back in the groove. There, that does it for that side. Now I'll do the same thing on this other strip. There, that's level. But before I can screed any more off, one of the things I'm going to have to do is fill in these channels from the float strips. Now, the wood float is what I use to take care of these irregularities. And because I've packed down this deck mud, the wood float rides right on the surface. Now, it's important that when you're using the edge of the wood float to remove the high spots, that you always keep it in motion, in more or less a circular motion. You don't just go like this. See what happens here? That just plows up the surface compared to up here where it's nice and smooth. The important thing is to always have the wood float going in circular motion. Now once I get this side done, I'll switch over and do the other side. And it's real important that you get this area packed in real tight, as dense as the areas on either side of it, otherwise you'll get a crack right where the float strip used to be. The rest of the floor is completed one section at a time using the same methods. First the mud is distributed, then it's packed down, the excess screeded off, and the rest redistributed. Screeding in a tight area is simply a matter of holding the straight edge at various angles to remove as much of the excess as possible. Anything left can be cleaned up with a steel trowel or the wood float. The wood float is the smoothing plane of the tile trade, and it has a distinct advantage over the steel trowel in that the texture that it leaves behind is coarse and grainy, ideal for tile setting. I'm cleaning out underneath of the flange to leave room for the toilet bowls. Of course, on a real job, I'd want to plug this pipe up with a wad of newspaper. 
Here at the threshold, where the side of the bed is open, it needs to be supported with a straight edge while I compact and cut away the excess. Now the texture of deck mud is such that once this is done, I can simply remove the straight edge and the deck mud will retain its shape. And to get the maximum strength out of the floor, I want to fill in the channels left by the float strips as quickly as possible. If it's compacted properly, the fresh deck mud should have no problem supporting me without making any dents or dings in the surface. At this point, I could set the tiles on the fresh mud, but to avoid damaging the bed, I let it harden up overnight. 